Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and as you may know, I'm currently on holiday in California where I've had an absolutely amazing week skiing with some friends. So the previous video was something a little bit different from the usual with the cars, of course, because we were out on the ski slopes and then checking out another friend's Audi RS7 who came up to join us. Now, we're back in the sunshine and there's something pretty cool right there, which belongs to my friend, the McLaren P1. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a sort of spoof kind of comparison video between the P1 sat here in race mode and the car that we've been using for the last week, the Lincoln Navigator. And you can see there's a little bit of a size difference between these two, but given we've been driving around the snow and the mountains and transporting ski gear and that kind of stuff, a supercar wasn't really appropriate. So the last couple of days have all been about lugging our stuff around in the Navigator. So let's take a little look head to head. McLaren P1 versus Lincoln Navigator. Hey look, it's Rob Darm. Let's get started, the engines. McLaren P1, 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 with all of the electric motors. Just over 900 brake horsepower, but a 3.8 litre engine versus the Navigator's 5.4 litre V8. So bigger engine, bigger car of course though, lots more weight. This thing, carbon fibre tub, weighs next to nothing. But hey, we're in America, this is land of big engines. And this thing has a giant whopping V8 in the front. The car itself is absolutely vast. So as well, of course, as the engine, well, let's, let's be pretty real here. If you're going for lap times, you're gonna be going for the P1. The Navigator is not gonna be keeping up with a P1 around a racetrack, especially sat here in race mode. As you've just seen, the way it lowers, the wing comes up at the back 30 centimeters, the suspension sits down and the car just looks amazing. I've done many videos with the P1s before, so you've seen, well, I've done a full sort of how do you put the car into race mode as well, demonstrated all of that. So let's talk practicality. In here, we've got two seats. Have a look. All P1s are left-hand drive. This car is gorgeous with the half leather, half Alcantara. P1 embroidery in the yellow stitching, but we've only got two seats. And let's be honest, they're bucket seats. Comfort, little bit sort of, um, verging on a, a hard one to call. They are actually spectacularly good seats as it happens, but not luxurious for long drives, not for driving six or seven hours up to the mountains. And let's face it, only two seats. Whereas on the other side, gently close the door, window goes back up. In the Navigator, check this out. You've even got a footstep for entry. Really big, comfy seats. You've got loads in the back, all the stuff food and entertainment and everything you could possibly want, that's gonna win. You can take five people in there. So you've got a bigger engine, you've got more seats, and let's come around the back, a bit dirty from driving, an electric tailgate, and a very big trunk, as they would say here in America, boots for us in Europe. So no problem throwing all your ski stuff and everything in there. And we can close that back up. It's the workhorse, loaded up. Let's come back round to the McLaren. I'm gonna show you the boot in here. I've got the key here, which has a lovely little MSO P1 logo on the back. So you pop the boot with the, well, the front trunk with this. And then you've got a little button just down in here that you press and lift it up. And there you have the front boot of a P1. You could actually fit like a small suitcase in here. Like the size of case you could just about take on a plane or some soft bags or something, but you're not gonna be getting your skis in there, that's for sure. You're not gonna be heading up to the mountains with your skis, your boots, your jackets, your trousers, and all of your other bits and bobs that have to go with a trip away. However, you could probably just about manage a weekend with some clever packing. So I'd say that works pretty well. Close that back down, click it into place, which of course, has these uh, awesome little vents, which are um, all the uh, sort of airflow and design and shape and the way it all 
swoops around through the car. And now that the sun's moving around, you can see the glistening volcano yellow paint, which I have to say is a little more impressive than the dirty finish of the white navigator from our trips through some pretty grimy roads. Let's jump into the inside. Take a look in here. So to open the doors, there's a button on the back here. Pops, lifts up. I think this car is gonna win on cool door points. We've got doors that do that versus normal doors. But we do have the side sills. Ooh, tough call there, tough call. And then they fall back up. Yeah, tricky one. So let's jump in here. Awkwardness of entry. This is not winning. But when you're in, it's pretty snug and pretty cool. This is a very nice place to be, of course. I've driven a couple of P1s before now, always absolutely love them. You've got the full digital display in front of you, which changes with different sort of modes. Turn on the ignition. Oh, letting us know we're in race mode, of course. You can see the charge. We've got the ability to drive a full sort of 10 miles in electric mode. All very, very cool and all our sort of usual entertainment and air conditioning and everything controlled through the centre stack here. Yeah, there's the button for E-mode. And you've got these glass roof panels. Yeah, pretty nice place to be inside the McLaren P1. Just taking a good look around if you haven't already seen this. So it's very cool and it's overloaded with technology, you know, DRS, iPass, all sorts of fun things that you might never know how to work. But, yeah, I'm now gonna work out how to get out, which we're holding a video camera. So if we were doing points here for ease of access while holding a video camera, the P1 would be uh, struggling slightly behind. I've unclipped the seatbelt while I've done it. However, for looks and awesomeness of interior, not much is gonna beat that. Let's come around here. Check out the beast of the navigator. Step in, step up. That high viewing position, you know, out over the front, everything around you is gonna feel small and pretty unimportant as I close the door. Both cars do this actually. Well, when I start the engine, the uh, steering wheel will automatically move, the seat will automatically move. In fact, let's fire it up, you know, old school. Get her rolling, everything down. Lincoln design everything to look traditional and old, old school, but you've got all the entertainment you need. You've got the backup cameras and everything to sort of help move the car around. Loads and loads of storage, comfort. You know, if you're gonna go on a long drive, this is a pretty good place to be to do it. And uh, yeah, I think more or less. Oh, we've got a sunroof. So P1's not alone in having a sunroof up there. And like I said, we've got the entertainment here on the back of the seats. So what have we had so far? We've had, well, size of engine, this is winning. Practicality, this car has more seats. Luggage space, again, this car is winning. Performance around the racetrack, well, I think that's gonna go to the little one down there, which actually, amusingly, you can't see at all. Um, so racetrack times P1, wow factor, P1. Um, what else do we have in this head-to-head -head comparison? Let me turn this off actually and jump back out. Doing it the awkward way. Check that out, comfort. The McLaren actually has comfort access as well, which does um, exactly the same thing, moving the uh, steering wheel. And if you have comfort seats, um, like in the uh, LT or uh, 650S or whatnot, then they'll move as well. So what else do we have? We've got entry by key code, which is quite cool. So if you don't have the key, you can actually still enter the car. That's something uh, we don't normally see. This is a, a Navigator L, the big one. Four-wheel drive, should get to that. Four-wheel drive running on the winter tyres here. This is also four-wheel drive. The electric motors run the front wheels, front axle. So, put the power down pretty quick in the P1. Not bad, not bad. So, this is probably the most unusual head-to-head -head comparison that has ever been done, but it seemed appropriate because one is effectively one of my favorite cars and the other is the car that we've been using for the last week driving around but doesn't the p1 just look awesome sat here 
in the race mode. Could sort of literally look around it forever, to be honest. Just like look at everything here, how much detail you can see. Looking through the diffuser down at the bottom, sat so low to the ground. Not quite sure how much of that you can take in, but it really is right down there. And while we're here, I should also point out this. How cool is that number plate? California plate P1. Matching Nevada plate P1 is on another navigator kept up in the ski resort, which looks so cool. I imagine putting the two together would be awesome. You can't see much of the engine in here. Kind of tucked away under this canopy and uh, around the back if you will need some work done on it. You have to have McLaren open it up fully. Should talk about filling the car. Oil cap in there. Around the other side. You've got the fuel cap. From 98 fuel. Hard to find that here in America. But yeah, the car is a uh, Looking unusual, half in the sun, half in the shade, sorry about that. I'm uh, trying to avoid the sun myself because being a uh, British guy, it's rather boiling for me out here right now. But lovely to have a look around and see the two cars. I'll just give you a real update really, just having fun here in the beautiful sunshine before I head off on my next adventures because there are some pretty awesome things lined up. So I'm very excited about all of this. But thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna pop the owner's link, Instagram link down in the description right below, P1 Young and big thanks to him for letting me have a look around the car. That's it for now though. I'm gonna catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. This is the moment. This is the LaFerrari. Let's pull the paddle, pop it into gear. The touch panel to open it up. Firstly, all of the body panels on the car, except for the doors,